Hi, uh, my name's Alvin. Um, today I'm going to be talking about React Native. Um, so let's just go into the basics. Um, like what is React Native, right? So React Native is a framework that uses JavaScript to build components, um, UI components, that basically runs with, runs uh, essentially with uh, iOS or Androids. Uh, and essentially anything that's built in React Native, it's pretty much indistinguishable from uh, Objective, C, Java, or Swift. So what that means is that if you have any Objective C, Java, or Swift components, you can ideally use this with React Native. It's a pretty convenient thing. Not many people use it, but it's just something to keep in mind that you can do. Uh, and yeah, so uh, before we go to this slide, uh, if you look on the right, there's a there's like a uh, print screen of like what's what uh, React Native would look like. Ideally, it looks pretty much the same as React. You have a class, it has its own state, you can render. Um, the only difference in this slide is that it has like a little style on the bottom, which we'll talk about later, and the app registry, which we'll also talk about later. But um, yeah, so it's extremely easy to use, right? So React Native and React is pretty similar. The structure, as I said, it has components, it has states, it has render, you could do component dip mount, you could do component will mount, all that stuff, you could do Redux in it. Everything that you do in React pretty much can be done in React Native. And that just means that if you're really good with React, React Native should be like really easy for you to pick up or really quick. Uh, the other thing is that you, all you need to start doing or start using React Native is a uh, code editor of your choice. So Sublime, VS Code, uh, Atom, for example. I use VS Code um, and Xcode. So once you have a code editor and an Xcode, you're ready to start. So you, init, you basically initialize a, a, a React Native app and everything is set up for you. You have a running app the minute you initialize. Some, uh, the, the picture on the side, on the, on the right, sorry, on the left. On the left is, um, it gives you th everything here, every folder or uh, file is given. Everything is here. There, there's nothing you really have to do about it. Uh, sorry. Uh, you, you don't have to create any of these folders. These folders and files are given to you the minute you start, so, which is great. I mean, like, for people that code, you don't want to be dealing with, you know, errors the minute you start. You want something that looks, you know, like it's working already. Um, so how do you start? Uh, like every other app, you probably want to install. So you do npm install uh, React Native CLI. You also want to install Yarn because it uses Yarn also. And after that, you just go React Native, init, and then whatever name you want to call your app. And it will pump out what you just saw before. This will be the my tech talk demo and it gives me everything everything that I need to start and everything I will need to work on um, the one thing that you want to note is that you want to start editing in iOS dot uh, index dot iOS dot js I'll show you where that's located later but it's a really simple file that you can just start editing and you want to branch everything into that file so for example it will kind of be like your main page that you want to refer everything into uh, but yeah um, I'm going to show you something that I've done. So let's see. So yes, uh, I'm going to run this. So this is Xcode, right? And the minute you have your uh, right, React Native app, you could pretty much just turn on Xcode and you could run it. And it should build by itself. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, that to the side. Yeah. Okay, so this is index.ios.js. It's basically a, a file that it would, that, that's the first thing that it would run, right? You're going to have to give it a couple of seconds. It will start running by itself. I don't know why it's so large. don't know how to fix this. Um, yeah. uh, this? The there? Scale? Uh, 50%? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, so yeah, so you, so the first thing that it will run will be your index.ios.js. Uh, where does that run? That runs in your test. It tells you that it's going to run that file right here. And the first thing to note about that is that I put something called tabs inside. Now that is 
um, I basically built something called a tabs navigator. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot wrap these navigators, tabs nav navigator, in anything like a view. If you wrap it in, it will give you a silent error, which is the worst. I spent like two hours doing this. And like, you, it, there's no error, but there's no tabs. So you just don't know what the hell is going on. Um, the other thing is, I haven't been using any of this in the beginning, in, the, um, in my iOS, in my index. But one thing is to note is that you have to import everything. So in React, you have to, you're given. You can just write div, you can just write span, you can write anything. And you don't have to import that from anywhere because it's given to you. Um, but here, you actually have to import. If you want to use text, you have to import. If you want to use switch, you have to import. If you want to use view, you also have to import. Uh, that's one key thing to note. So yeah, um, let's see. So yeah, so just don't just remember to not. Do note that React is really similar to React Native, but it's not exactly the same. So like in, like we were talking about it before in navigation. If you had a tab, is if you have a nav bar or a footer, it's very easy to just put that in a div and it'll start running, right? However, if you put a tabs navigation inside a, so the substitute for a div is a view. So if you put a, v, uh, a tabs bar or a tabs navigation inside a view, it will break. Nothing will happen. It won't render. You won't get anything out of it. Um, so that's one thing you have to remember. So there's multiple ways to navigate around. One thing I was talking about is tab navigation, which is like you just have tabs on the bottom. Another one is called a stack navigation. I'm not going to go in too in depth about these little details. You can find those on the docs. But um, it's a really good way for you to go through different pages because you don't have different links. You can't go and call upon a path to go to different pages on your, uh, on your app. You just, it's, it's better to use uh, navigations th uh, that are given to you to go to go through different pages, it's easier that way. Um, so there's structure more like a routes. Like you have to structure the navigation more like a routes. I'll show you later on what I mean by that. And yeah, you cannot wrap it in a view, so do not do that. That's actually completely wrong. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a routes page right here. And all it is, all tabs navigation is, is you just have to, like you have to give it a name. And you just have to say, hey, look, what screen am I using? Or like, what kind of component am I going to be using for that one? And on the bottom, if this thing is not blocking it, uh, I don't know. So yeah, oops. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I wasn't trying to do that. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so if you have two different tabs, right? You can uh, actually go between different tabs. And don't know if I could pull this up. No, I can't. This is really hard. Um, so anyways, you can create two different tabs. And you could also, what it is is as many tabs as you want, you just add it into this tab navigator. And one thing to note is that you, no matter what you do in any components or any pages, you always have to register your component. If you don't register it in your app.registry, you essentially just, it won't run. It won't run the way you want it to, at least. Um, that's really important. Um, so in every page, every component, everything that you do, you should make sure you use app.registry, which is given to you. It's in React Native. Uh, so yeah, so I was, I was trying to play around with it. I created like two like dummy components, and I was trying to get the things into my home page. So I was trying to render. So just to show you that it's really similar to React, you can actually you know, get um, different components into your home page just like you do in React. So um, one way I was trying to show that is I put a little switch. So if I was to click the switch, it would actually render one of my, uh, render my components too. And it would just you know, do this fun little thing and it switches and renders it for me, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to show the tabs because I did that a couple of times. Um, yeah, so the key differences between React, uh, React and React Native is that in React, you're dealing with a DOM. Uh, that's really important to note. Um, you're dealing with a DOM, and you're dealing probably with HTML and whatnot. In React Native, you're not. There's no DOM. You're not working on a DOM. Um, you're working in just essentially with J JavaScript. And that's why, in React Native, your, all your, your styles or your um, designs and whatnot, it goes into this thing called style sheets. And there, you have to write it in JavaScript. You can't do your CSS 
style sheet and then import it or do any of the stuff that you did in React. You have to actually write it in this kind of format, like a JavaScript format, for it to work. Because then it will then be called in any of your text or views or whatnot. This is essentially just the way to do it. Uh, yeah, so you don't use CSS style sheets. You just write your style sheets in J JavaScript. And um, it's navigation is a lot easier to use just what they give you. They have something called React Navigator or React Navigation, and you can just use that. And the last thing to note is you can, the error handling or like to deal with error in React Native is kind of different. It's a little bit different because you don't have a console, or to be exact, it's not built into the little virtual iPhone on the, on the screen. Um, so yeah, so like if you were to do error handling, it'll pop up this big red screen, right? Um, I can actually show you how that looks like. So yeah, if you were to do, if you were just to do console.error, it'll give you this big red box. Yeah, so this is, I mean, this is every programmer's dream, right, to see this big red box. But um, yeah, so if you were to do console.log, not console.error, you actually wouldn't see anything. Nothing would come up. And the reason why is because there's no place to log this to. Um, one way to get around this, to actually, if you really like using console.log, um, is to use something called React Native log slash iOS. Uh, you do that on your terminal. Uh, the other thing is if you want to see something, for example, um, like you want to see what the state is or like the current state is, you could do console.error, which I just showed you. Um, you could log that this.state and it'll pop up. But there's a slight problem with this is because if you always console.error, right, your screen will always be red. You can't see what your app looks like. You can't really do anything with it. It's, it's a big hassle. So I wouldn't recommend this unless like you really need this. So. Um, one thing you can do if you want to use console.log and you don't want to use the terminal for it is if you do command D, there's something called debug JS remotely, and you go in here. And over here, you actually can do command option J, and like everything comes up here. So if you do console.log, this actually comes up on your, on your console. You actually can see what's going on, and it wouldn't take the screen away from you. It wouldn't really affect it. Uh, so yeah, so you could debug remotely. You could debug. Um, using console.log with a whole bunch of like different methods, such as sorry, uh, yeah, you could use React Native log iOS, or you could just console.error or console.warn, which that takes up your screen actually. So that's not a great way to deal with errors, I would say, like a last resort, I would say. Um, but yeah, essentially, it's just just. One thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, React Native is that you always have to double check if something is if something is um, if something is like you think it works in React. It doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily work in React Native. It could, but you sh should always double check. Um, one thing is the tabs, which I found really annoying. But in conclusion, yeah, um, there's a lot of actual. There's a lot of ways to look up different tabs. I did ReactNavigation.org. It gives you the docs. Very easy to read. Very easy to deal with. Um, you could go to JS.coach. That gives you different buttons, different tabs, everything you need. And um, something you can use to look in. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it's something you can look in. It's like Expo and Native. Ba uh, native based IO. These things actually make your life a lot more easier. But that's for another day. So. Um, thank you. And if you have any questions, just look it up. There.